thank you for being with us here today. We appreciate your tuning in to our virtual experience of church. Um, you've probably figured out by now that if you don't support us, we won't be here. And so we hope that if this is your church home or you're inspired by what's happening here, that you will in fact hit that donate button some point today and support us. Let's see, I was going to talk about our inner experience today. You know, in the science of mind philosophy, we often say that this teaching, science of mind, is a faith, it's a philosophy, and it's also a way of life. So it's always so interesting, I find, to go out into the world away from the science of mind bubble that I largely live in, uh, to be with people who do not necessarily subscribe to this type of believing, this type of thinking, this way of life. Um, I have to remind myself again and again that everyone is on their perfect path, whatever their path looks like. They're on the right path. They're doing exactly what they need to do and experiencing exactly what they need to experience for their own soul's growth and evolution. So like we talk about often, there are many paths to God. Why? Because God's the only place to go. It makes sense that there would be many paths because we are all so different as individuals. But see, anything um, that does not support my spiritual growth, my, evolu my spiritual evolution, I think, well, you know, those are probably, if it doesn't support my growth, that that's probably just another one of my good ideas. And you know, another one of my good ideas and about $4 will get you a latte somewhere, right? So it becomes clear that the world, uh, that, that in the world, people, um, throw up walls, the way I think of it, or we create kind of a barrier within ourselves between other people, uh, and, and, but I'm really clear that that separation that we make up, and we do make it up, between us and other people, it's, it is totally created. You know, all of the ways that we see difference, all of the ways that we see separation, we made all of that up. You know, so I imagine that, you know, God looks at all of us on earth and just looks and says, you know, I love all of them. They're all my children. I don't understand what this fighting and disagreement is about. See, my hope and prayer for, for all of us is that this teaching, the science of mind philosophy, will give us the tools, will support us, and we will employ these tools so well that it will lead us to a real spiritual experience, which is always an inner experience. I think the genuine spiritual, I would even say religious experience, is yes, an internal experience, and it has nothing to do with the experiences outside. Now, the experiences in the outer world are fine, some of them are wonderful, and, but when we see good out here in the world, it's important to recognize that that is a reflection of the spiritual truth that's on the inside. What's outside is never cause to our experience. What's outside, what we see in the world, forms, effects, manifestation, that is always the result of what's happening on the inside for us. So um, the experience, I think, the experience that we are after, really, if I were just to bring it down to the simplest, simplest thing, is our job on the spiritual path is to know God, to connect, to plug in, to remind ourselves that we are one with the principal power and presence of life itself. That is our job. Wow, that's a big job, isn't it? That's a really, really big job. I think we think we, as spiritual seekers, have all kinds of other jobs. Oh, I've got to take care of my family. I have to take care of my spouse. My job is to show up at 110% for work. And I agree with all of that, all of that. But beyond all of that, there is a level where our job is simply to know God, to connect with that presence of in, the indwelling spirit, to plug into it, to know it's right where we are. In Emma Curtis Hopkins' wonderful teaching of scientific Christian mental practice, something that I teach here pretty often, Jesus teaches uh, us that we can lift up our life by lifting up our thoughts. Right? If we change our thoughts, we will absolutely change our life. This is where so many of us come into the teaching. We're looking to change our lives, and so a little upliftment of thought would do us really, really good. Right? I, I want to lift my life out of some external condition. You know, maybe a job has ended or a relationship has ended or I have a health challenge. This is so often what draws people into our teaching, you know. 
In Buddhism, though, there is uh, this idea that the raft is not the shore. Maybe you've heard that. And for us, the path is not home. It's not the goal. Being on the spiritual path is not actually the destination. Right? The, the, the destination for me is when I know, as we say every Sunday in church, I'm at home in the heart of God. See, to know that I am at home in the heart of God, that's the destination. That's the consciousness. That's the place I want to live my life from. If I'm at home in the heart of God, what problem could I possibly have? If I'm at home in the heart of God, who could I possibly have upset with? You know, it, it, that just doesn't exist for me. So, you know, truth has many varied and different paths, obviously, right? And so if something makes us separate from God, if something makes us feel separate, as in not loving, uh, separate from other people, then we got to skip it. We've got to get that out of our life. See, I think what we're after is we want to have an experience of joining in oneness. This is something that I feel our community, our church community, has done so, so well. We come together and we love each other so much. And I know so many of us miss this right now tremendously. I certainly do. You know, I don't have another group of people outside of church somewhere that I'm hiding. Church people are my people. That's my whole life, our church people. And I really miss being with my people on a regular basis. I hope you know that, and I suspect if I miss everyone, you miss everyone too. You know, so, so the idea, though, is that we want to join in oneness. So because we can't do that physically now, we have to do it in consciousness. Because remember, our teaching, we are all connected on the unseen side of life. In the mind, in the heart that is God, we are already all one. <sighs> So, all right, the goal is we want to join in oneness. And to do that, I think we have to believe in not only the inherent goodness of God, but there is an inherent goodness in all people. I believe that with my heart and soul, that people are basically, basically good. I mean, think about it. Has there ever been a baby been born, you know, and in the delivery room, the doctor, like, says, oh, my God, this one's going to be a big handful. This one's going to be trouble. You know, no, of course not. Every child comes in, you know, as this expression of the infinite loving spirit. Now, unfortunately, sometimes we get our hands on those beings and don't necessarily teach them the most loving, creative ways to be, right? So the point is that what we focus on increases. <clears throat> We have to watch, I believe, all of us, what we're filling our minds with. Because we always, always have God within us, right? In here, in here, God within our being. So this means we have within us infinite, infinite love. We have an infinite capacity for love. We have an infinite capacity to include more, to include more people, to include more differences, to include more variety. This is the way we're wired. We have that, in, and people think, oh, I couldn't do that. I can't just go around loving people. I can't just go around loving people. Well, why not? Have you tried it? I mean, why couldn't we go around just loving people? It's not like that's ever been like the main thrust of being, uh, of how we are in the world. See, the difficulties we see and experience in the world are most often because humanly we have turned away from this idea of love that we think that something else is more important than loving each other. And what we see again and again is, <laughs> it's not. Loving each other, loving our world, is the most important thing. In A Course in Miracles, which is a similar teaching to Science of Mind, there are many similarities. It talks about how everything is either love or fear. And so when I am not loving, when I myself, me, Mark, when I am not showing up as a loving person in the world, it's because I'm entertaining fear in my consciousness. My mind is somehow filled with fear, fear that they're going to take my good from me, or they're going to hurt me in some way, or there's not enough for me, or I'm not big enough to rise to the occasion, or something like that. So I'm either in a place of love, or I'm in a place of fear. And I like that because it makes it very, very simple. You know, the negatives that we experience in life again and again and again on a daily basis, you know, um, that somebody has a sickness they're dealing with, somebody's dealing with lack, somebody's dealing with hunger, somebody's dealing with poverty, they exist on earth. Yes, absolutely. Those are experiences on earth, but those are not the ultimate truth of who we are as spiritual beings. We cannot let those labels define us or limit us or keep us back and small. 
You know, when I talk about the Bible, uh, my belief is that the Bible, all the characters in the Bible, every single one, they exist within us. So here we are com coming into you know, the middle of July here, and uh, so we're about halfway from Christmas, so I was thinking that, you know, gee, the Christmas story also exists within all of us. And so we could say, if we look at the characters in that Christmas story, that Mary is the feminine aspect in us. You know, because we're all a combination of male and female. In fact, in the original Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes says that spirit that we are is neither male nor female. Hmm, isn't that interesting, right? So the Christmas story exists within all of us, within all of us, and I believe that Mary is that feminine part of us that is receptive, that says yes, right? It says yes to the divine, that that part of us is going to give birth to something great, something divine. Now, Joseph, I think, is also within us because Joseph is that part of us that interacts, interfaces with, um, with the world out here, you know, to make it safe for this mystical experience of saying yes to God and giving birth to something greater. You know, light always, always triumphs over the darkness. And yes, there are lots of ways that darkness is appearing on the planet right now. You know, the world, I think, is hungry, hungry for the light. You know, it's wonderful that Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, but now it's up to us, you know? Yep, wonderful Jesus, but it's up to us. And so the science of mind offers us this, that the creative power of the universe, the same power that God works with, we individualize that power is within us. And if we practice, if we do spiritual practice, our mind begins to change. We have an infinite capacity to not be whoever it was we've thought of ourselves as being. You know? In mystical teaching, they often talk about take no thought. You know, just think about God. This is like Emmett Fox's wonderful teaching of the golden key, where he says, don't think about the problem, think about God instead. Don't think about the problem, think about God instead. Because again, remember, that's what I started with, that that's our job, to know God, to connect, to plug in. <sighs> Take no thought. Emma Curtis Hopkins, again, is a big fan of this idea. Um, because you know, God has the capacity, and I believe that God is always trying to lead us to an even greater good. So Emma gives this teaching. She says, look down. So do that now while you're watching our service. Look down. If you look down, right, you're going to see problems. You're going to see effects. You're going to see conditions. You're going to see what's wrong. When we look down, we're mired in the world of externals. But now, Emma says, look out. Look to the horizon wherever you are. And when we look out, just that little shift of looking out rather than down, what we start to see are possibilities. It's like now our mind is open to receive possibilities. Hmm? And now the last one that Emma says, and I really love this, Emma says, though, look up. Look up. Right? And so when we look up, what we're doing is that we're open to new thoughts. We're a new thought church. Emma says that when we looked up, we are informed by God. Isn't that incredible? That's so beautiful that we are informed by God. So looking down, I'm informed by my history. I'm informed by the effects of the world. Looking out, I'm open to possibilities. But when I look up, when I raise my thinking up, I am informed by God. I think this is fascinating because, you know, so often, and I love religious artwork. I, whenever I travel, I go and look at churches and paintings and things like that. And it's always interesting when I find an artist who has portrayed some character in their painting that's looking up. You know, there are a lot of pictures of people looking down, you know, because, but, but I think where that came from is that people used to believe, and maybe still do, that, um, that their suffering brought them closer to God. In the science of mind, we don't believe you have to suffer to get close to God. We believe that you can go willingly to God. You don't have to have catastrophic, horrible experiences to be in relationship with God. We go willingly into a relationship with God, with love, with spirit. Um, so I think we are all the vehicle for God to operate through. You know, God, good, 
is waiting to incarnate in a greater way through each and every one of us. Think about that, that God is waiting to express through me, through you, in a greater way than God has ever expressed through us before. And all that's required of us is to say yes to that, to be open, to be incredibly gracious receivers. See, I think it's so important for kids, well, okay, it's important for all of us to have really good heroes, to have really good role models. But now that I'm big, now I'm an adult, I realize, oh, I have to be that. I have to be that role model for other people. I have to be that, that sort of hopefully positive uh, figure. You know, greatness rises above the confusion of the moment. You know, that's always available. And I have to remind myself that, that even though there may be chaos over here, or there's confusion over here, or some tumult in the world, there, the greatness of God is always available to rise up in any given moment. You know, in Science of Mind, we have really, really great tools to, to work with, uh, the, the, to work with spiritual principles in a really intelligent way to evolve our life forward. You know, people say, I don't know what to do. Well, you could pick any one tool, any one tool from the Science of Mind arsenal of tools, of which there are so many, and just start with that. So if you're not doing it now, start to pray every day. Pray in an affirmative way. Please, 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 by all means, meditate, study, find a place to be of service. Please tithe to your church. You know, practice gratitude on a daily basis. Practice forgiveness. All of these things, they don't just stir the pot. They don't just uh, take up time and give you something to do. They're expanding your consciousness. They're releasing what does not serve you to make room for the greater good that God is trying to bring into our lives. You know, what is it that I, and, and then after we have done our spiritual practice, whatever that is, I think we have to sit and ask, what is it I need to know to bring about what I say I want? Spirit, what do I need to know? What's my next step? What's my next doing part? You know, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. When I think about that, what that means is I, the Spirit of God within me, the Spirit of God in you, has the capacity to overcome the error that we experience in the world around us. We can overcome lack. We can overcome sickness. We can even overcome death. This is one of the promises of scriptures, that these external experiences only have the power over me that I let them have over me. You know, humanly or humanity, I think we've we're just at the beginning, I think, of, evol of, of evolving into our own greater yet to be, that there is a spiritual destiny for humanity, and I think we are on the precipice of moving into that. So, you know, I love, love the greeting in, uh, in India and in many traditions around the world where they say namaste. Namaste is the Christ in me recognizes and greets the Christ in you or the divinity in me recognizes and greets the divinity in you. So to all of you today, before we pray, I say namaste, the Christ in me recognizes and greets the divinity in you. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to recognize that right here God is fully present. We are surrounded and filled with an infinite, loving, intelligent spirit that is the most true, real thing about us. We are all emanations of God consciousness. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I also know we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so I speak this word for each and every one of us today. I speak the word that we are open and receptive and we're not looking down. And although, yes, sometimes we look out, we are actually looking up in our life. And we are informed by the presence of the living spirit that God, the infinite love intelligence, reveals everything we need to know and be and do. I know we follow this guidance and our life gets better in an infinite number of ways. So today we let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So imagine a light emanating out from your heart and touching every single person on the face of the earth. Exclude no one. Hey, you can start where it's easy. Start with your family and friends and then move out to your neighborhood and all of your city, your state, and now the entire country and world. Nothing but loving, healing energy emanating out from you to bless and lift all people everywhere. 
We include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, loved ones, whoever we're carrying in our heart today, many members of our church community. We know that right where they are, God is fully present and that healing is happening on every level, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is an upliftment in consciousness for all of us. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.